Good morning, guys. Hope everyone's doing well. I put out a couple of videos last night, but I know one of them, my voice was really quiet. It was just late, and I didn't want to wake other people up. Um, so I apologize if it was too soft uh, on the volume. But I'm going to read those scriptures again um, just because I think it's worth it. You know, and it's regarding the kind of the split that's gone on with the grace community. And I know some of these things have to happen. And I know some of the people involved, and I love them all. And I'm not here to judge or condemn any one of them. This is hard when this stuff happens, especially, you know, on social media. And people tend to gravitate and choose sides, and it's just it's a natural consequence of some stuff. But, again, my, my hope and prayer is that if it's possible, people could reconcile and um, rather dig into the scriptures together, you know, debate some of those debatable issues and issues people disagree on, like annihilationism, dreams, etc. And as long as it's not a Romans 16, 17 or Titus 3, 10 situation, you know, then we can agree to disagree. But you know, on, on things like annihilationism, you know, both sides can't be right. And I think it's worth looking at just to get an answer from the Lord 100% on this. Because some people say they heard from the Lord and it's this. And some people say I've heard from the Lord and it's that. Well, it can't be both. And scripture's got to be our guide. And yeah, there's, a, there's an unction of the spirit. But we're also imperfect and i don't know it's just a tricky thing it's just a tricky thing because i know some saved brothers who believe in annihilation what am i going to do you know i'm going to agree to disagree with them as long as it, they don't take it to a level where you know there's slander and stuff like that but either way i, I love the people involved uh in some of these disagreements you know and I know a lot of people are chiming in and you know guys I I'm a nobody you know I don't have many subscribers but I, I try to be honest and sincere as imperfect as I am I love the Word of God and I and I love scripture and I love the Lord and I love people I want I love to pray for people it gets me out of my own head and, and I want to be um, a minister of reconciliation like the scripture says and a minister of peace and I, I just my heart just grieves you know and when I was reading these scriptures last night the Lord just spoke to me through them and I'm just gonna share them again you know given the situation at hand and I just think it's it speaks for itself um, okay so it starts in Galatians 5 13 and it goes through 26 so for brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. And I know most people in this are doing that because they love the Lord and they want to help others and they're, they're gifted in different ways. Um, for all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And that's not e always easy to do. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. That's where we've got to be careful. This I say, then walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. When our flesh gets involved and ramped up, guys, all bets are off. Because we all want to be right. And when the flesh gets involved, Satan will take that and he will capitalize on it. And he will put a magnifying glass on it. And it gets ugly. Um, let's see. I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, they, the, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's talking about 
like rewards and stuff. It's not saying you're not going to make it to heaven if you've done some of those things or are doing some of those things. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And temperance is self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those things don't happen naturally in our flesh. They happen through the Holy Spirit, through Christ in us. Being a stick on the vine and just staying there and, and allowing Christ to do things we can't do, like being meek and, you know, um, forbearing one another, which is hard to do. It's hard for all of us. Um and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. He's saying have. That's past tense. I mean, I guess it could be present, you know, in some aspects. But And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And those affections and lusts can look really good, like, you know, righteousness and all this stuff. But... The flesh can manifest in weird ways because Satan comes as an angel of light and he wants to puff you up. And we all want to be right already. That's just built into our fallen human nature. But when Satan fans the flames, it gets weird, you know, because you got righteousness, but, you know, inside it's dead men's bones and stuff. But it's just a tricky thing. You know, we all have to deal with it, and myself included. I'm preaching to myself here, too. I'm no authority on this. I'm just recognizing some stuff. The Lord just, these words just jumped out. Um, so, you know, crucifying the flesh with its affections and lusts, I believe that's a process and that takes some time. And as we un start understanding the word of God more and allowing Christ to live through us, we are better able to reckon the flesh. And I see people do that <laughs> really well. I'm not so good at it still. I still have issues. I get emotional. A lot of us do. And that's when, you know, things start to really heat up and get weird. But, you know, if it's a Romans 16, 17 or a Titus 3, 10 situation, I understand. We need to move on and forget, you know, we need to just walk away from certain people at times. But if they're debatable issues, you know, and some people think annihilationism is heresy and others don't. So that's a debatable issue right there. But, um, it's a tricky one, you know, because I have, say, brothers who I love who believe in annihilationism, like Renee Rowland. You know, she's a sister I love, but I disagree with her on that. But I don't allow it to um, cause me to disfellowship with her just because of that. I think it's dangerous, very dangerous, but I still, you know, I can tell Renee's heart from her ministry that she loves the Lord and she loves people. But anyway, uh, let me get back to these scriptures. Uh, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another, you know, like this competition and just making jabs that might not be necessary. Um, I don't think I see a lot of that going on. I just fear that some of it has gotten to a point of envying one another and the vain glory about you know, subscribers, and it becomes a competition. I'm not saying anyone instigated that, but that's just how it becomes. And again, I think I said this in my last video, that the scriptures say that they would know us by our love. And yeah, there can be sharp disagreements, obviously, like uh, Paul and Barnabas had, and Paul and Peter had, you know, but they came back together. That's my hope. That's my prayer. Um, so I want to read that, and then... Galatians 6, 1 through 10, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And, you know, some of the stuff, people get offended. When the truth is spoken, some people get offended if people are brutally honest. And that's going to happen. But that's the flesh thing. We're hurt easily. I am too. I've been very sensitive. Um... You know, I had some major trauma growing up, especially early on, and I tend to be very sensitive, and I have to watch myself on that. But, um, I mean, those are potent scriptures. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, that could be any kind of fault, guys. It could be a sin pattern. It could be a doctrinal issue. It could be a bunch of stuff. Ye which are spiritual, you know, those who are led by the Spirit, who have died to their flesh, 
Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You know, we can get puffed up when we're right about something. You know, we can, we can take that and make a mess of it. I know I've done that. Uh, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, let's 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 come around those who are hurting. That's that's the focus of my ministry mainly is one of the things is to, to come around those who are hurting and pray for them and lift them up uh, because I've been there and done that I'm myself. I've been down and out in Christianity and in cults and stuff. Uh, bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. There's a lot of self-professed teachers on YouTube, guys, and some of them you can't trust. Now, most of the people in the grace community involved in this thing, they're they're all brothers, and they all have, you know, sound doctrine for the most part. Um, so this is tricky, too. Um, but let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. You know, and that work is like the work of the Lord, and it's in Scripture, and it's, it's not like good works proves you're saved type of thing. We all know that. Um, for every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. You know, if there are people receiving from ministries, you know, let, let's respectfully talk about things if we have disagreements, you know, because it says we're to give double honor those who, who labor in the word. Um, and they deserve our respect. And I respect a lot of brothers and sisters, even in this, this little squabble here, I respect a lot of them because they're highly gifted and um, I know they love the Lord, so it gets tricky. Um, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man sows, that he also will reap. For he that soweth into the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. You'll have a peace if the Holy Spirit's working through you, and he shows you the truth, and you're, you're at peace with it, and you can communicate that in a way that is respectful, and honest and you know has dignity and yet some people can get brutally offended and go off and that may show a kink in someone else's armor but this isn't a competition about pointing fingers at each other it's about trusting the scriptures more than our perspectives and being able to come together as a body and work things out the way the lord wants us to I understand um, sharp disagreements will happen, and sometimes people have to go their separate ways. But I, I just pray, if at all possible, for any reconciliation in this. Because I love the people involved, and I don't want to see Satan take advantage of this like he already has in some instances. And I'm not an authority on this split in the grace community. I'm not trying to get up here and pontificate. I'm just sharing my heart because I love the people involved. Um, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You know, I've heard some brothers apologize in this, and they were really sincere. And that's why I don't understand why it's still going on. I just wish people would just receive forgiveness and the apologies and agree to disagree if possible and just move on but i know it's hard you know i know it's tricky but anyway i just wanted to share this i'm sorry my last video was so quiet <laughs> but um oh there was another scripture a brother came on and made a comment and man it, i never saw this before um it's in job it's in 625 this is really interesting guys this is job um, this is powerful. This is Job 6. I'm going, to, I'm going to read 24 through 26. Teach me and I will hold my tongue and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. How forcible are right words, but what doth your arguing reprove? Do you imagine to reprove words and the speeches of one that is desperate? which are as wind. <laughs> There's some powerful stuff in there. You know, how, how forcible are right words? In other words, truth is offensive sometimes. When you know you're on the right side of something, it can really rip someone. 
if their flesh is involved. Even our own human spirit, we don't like to be corrected, especially publicly. But the Lord said there's great honor if you can accept reproof. You know, that's all over scripture, but it's not easy to do. It took me a long time. I was so fouled up in my doctrine and people were coming at me and I would rip them apart. And I've since learned from that. I was dead wrong. My flesh was involved. My doctrine was fouled up. And it took years to finally get to a place where I'm actually understanding the scriptures. I'm rightly dividing. And I can say, Lord, if I'm wrong on this, show me the truth so I can change. Because I don't want to teach lies to anyone. No, sir. No, thank you. Did that for too long. But anyway, I wanted to share those scriptures a brother shared. And uh, I think they're good. So that's, that's it, guys. I just wanted to share that. Um, again, I did another video also last night um, where I linked, I think, four videos. And I encourage you guys to watch those videos because they really do boil down what's going on. It's actually two from Andy Woods about this whole, the rioting in, in our country and our history, and it's really good. And there's one by Brandon Holthaus of Rock Harbor Church Prophecy which he talks about um, the biblical aspect of what's going on and some of the motives behind these groups. And then there's one by Tucker Carlson, which just shows flat out hypocrisy and some really creepy stuff going on um, with our government and some of this stuff. And I, I'm not gonna speak a lot more about it because I know it can be, this can be divisive to people, but, um, a lot of us can see through this propaganda and some of the lies that are coming out from this. Taking an, a, a real innocent situation and something we all know was wrong, but exploiting it and twisting it and using it for nefarious purposes. Looking good, you know, but there's just a lot of weird stuff behind it. So please watch those videos in, in that video where I linked them. And I hope they bless you and just open your eyes. And I don't, I don't, stay glued to the TV or anything on this stuff. I don't even have my TV plugged in. I just do a few news channels that I trust. And there's only a couple. I don't trust mainstream media guys. It's garbage. They are feeding you lies and popular opinion. Um, and they're causing division. It's really, you know, uh, my sister Dawn Carrasco said it best when she said, uh, the media is bewitching the masses. <laughs> I think she was spot on in that. But anyway, I love you guys, and I hope you have a blessed day. All right.